Right, can I snap? Uh, Ooh, can we get to snap do, as well? Can we do... Sound check. Um, microphones. I know how much you hate. <laughs> I hate this shit. You're like, oh my god, I hate the quality sound. <laughs> it is the worst because it fucks up my face. <laughs> yeah, true. And then I don't look as pretty. I want to look pretty. Um, pretty and skinny. <laughs> so, it's, uh, I prefer closer, but let's go with two inches away from your mouth. I mean, that's one. Yeah, so you can do two. Let's compromise. Like here? Yeah. We're quite, see, we're it's getting better. I know. <laughs> we're getting better. Uh, so been Our relationship has evolved. Sorry. So, you want to do two inches away from your mouth? One second. Oh, what does that mean? It's the fancy. B and C common mark. So, one take one, B and C, common mark. One take one, B and C, common mark. Oh, so God. A and C, one take one, A and C, common mark. One take one, A and C, comma mark. Yes. Yeah. One take one, comma, wait, so what is it? Take one take one, A and C, comma mark. One take one, A and C, comma, six. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> Do again. Are we recording this? This is great okay. content. I love it. <laughs> You'll know what I mean when I say it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is amazing. I have the yeah. memory of a goldfish. I can't remember. Oh, I do too. Of a, <laughs> literally of a blueberry muffin. Or a Lauren squirrel. like says things to me, and I'm just like, yeah. And then I'm like, wait, what did you just say? Because my brain's always just going all the time. Do you know what? That's an entrepreneur thing. I think. Yeah. Like, Liam. I Liam literally was talking to me earlier, and I was going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he goes, you're listening to me. I was like, yeah. And he goes, what did you What did you just say? I heard everything you yeah. said, but I was also on the other side of my brain doing like 50 other things yeah. at the same time. I help it. I'm like, I'm like, Vicky, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. This has been like a long time in the making. And as soon as I met you on Zoom for a like little date, like I was like, <laughs> we're going to be friends. I'm so pumped that yeah, you're here. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, before we get into like the main crux of the episode, we like to ask, ask 10 quick fire questions. So okay. are you ready? I'm ready. Are you I ready? Okay. So first question, if you're a superhero, Hero, what would your superpower be and what costume would you wear oh my god i feel like i want to say something really like boring like healing people or like flying and stuff but i feel like a more fun answer would be like always having amazing outfits all the time and not having to like think about that because that's a huge problem in my life and the outfit's just got to be something pink and bold and shiny glittery we love pink bold and shiny i love that anything I, have, did, you, did you guys ever have sailor moon here no. So Sailor Moon was like, I think it was Korean. So like she got blonde hair. Blonde hair. Yeah, and the, oh my God, the outfits were 10 out of 10. Love. But they were like huge in Australia when I was growing up. And I used to dress oh, up no like way. Sailor Moon every weekend. <laughs> I used to have these like frilly knickers that I'd like wear over a leotard. And I'd wear my mum's like marigolds and run around the house and pretend that. to be Sailor Moon. It was like the best. <laughs> um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever Googled at 3 a.m.? Googled. Googled. Um, Googled. That's what it sounds like when you're saying it at 3 a.m. <laughs> I think I Google a lot of things like, every day. I think weirdest thing probably i wonder a lot of things i question like everything um probably like why doesn't everyone speak one language in the world i find that really interesting interesting because i was on holiday recently and i was like i wish i could just speak to them like but why don't why do we all have different languages i find that fascinating yeah could go down a rabbit hole with it language is so interesting it is and it's funny when you get really get into it you realize that actually it comes down to like the core of every language comes back to like three yeah that, even like, like accents and everything. things like that is yeah. so interesting isn't it because you've got your aussie twang going on a little bit of an aussie twang yes. i don't even know what, what yes. Seven yon blanc. i love doing an australian accent i know it's so fun but i don't know what my accent sounds like because i'm from manchester but i feel like People have loads of different Man- Mancunian, Mancunian accents, yeah. so I don't know. I also think it depends on where you're from yeah. in Manchester. Like, I've got a friend who's who's from Manchester. He is so northern, yeah. like, or, or to a point where my friend just can't understand a fucking word he says. <laughs> he's like, you're right, love. Yeah, he's like proper like that. Yeah, <laughs> I love and I'm it. Just like the other way, like, I was like, you sound really posh. You are very posh. I think it depends how fast I'm speaking. Sometimes I'll be like. Oh, she's like 30 minutes away. But since I'm like, oh, she's 30 minutes away. It depends on how fast away. I'm speaking. I'm usually a fast speaker. It also depends for me on how many drinks I've had. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if I'd had a couple of margaritas, <laughs> it definitely the full comes, back. comes back. Yeah, out. the full Australian comes back. <laughs> I'm going to see my family for the whole month of December, pretty much. Um, and I'm so excited to take my kids. Oh my God. And the, be fl- so the flight's well. bankrupted me, but never mind. Oh. <laughs> um, 
And uh, I know when I come back, having spent all of that time with my family, I'm going to be like, hi, guys, yeah, how's it like, going? Is everyone this? good? I, I love it. Snow. I would mirror that as well. Like, if you were around me all the time, I'd mirror it. I it. <laughs> well, I do with my mum. My mum's really Australian. So when I, when I, like, last night I was with her, I'm like, hello. Hello, <laughs> hey, gang. No. <laughs> or no. Um, did you watch H2O? Oh, my God, yeah. Cleo, no. Cleo. no. Cleo. <laughs> what a what a good show. I love Such it. Such a good show. If you didn't watch H2O, it was like this mermaid Australian. show, Australian mermaid show with these three girls with mermaids and if they touched water, they turned into mermaids. It was 10 out of 10. Such a good show. I'd still watch it now. I would. Um, if you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, but it had to be a bizarre combination, what would it be? Oh, well, like instantly I think of potatoes because you got like crisps, chips. Is that it? Maybe mm-hmm. that's maybe it's not as many as I thought of. Um, anything salty, I love. I'm actually a really fussy eater, but I eat a lot of one thing. I'm like one of those people where I eat loads of it, and then after a week, I, I'll be so disgusted by it because I just get so. <laughs> that's such an ADHD just, thing, and, by the way. I know I'm like undiagnosed ADHD, but I like eat all the same thing and get like hyper fixated on it and then like if I smell it a week later I'm like oh, I, can't, I can't eat it I did. I do that it's so bad I do, I do it with everything like even yeah. like TV songs. shows songs yeah. I'll play the same song over it's and over so and over bad. and over again and then yeah. I'm like to be like ew I hate that yeah. song yeah so like I don't, I don't even know what my answer would be I love like anything probably that I shouldn't eat like I sort of have the taste palette of like a five year old boy like chicken nuggets and stuff I'm trying to expand it but I, I love that. Boring answer. I mean, who doesn't love chicken nuggies? <laughs> chicken nuggies. Le- Liam's just across there, so I can't eat gluten. Oh. And there's a bunch of other crap as well. It's very <laughs> boring. Um, Tarek, who's our producer on the um, on the podcast, always take, make, takes the piss out of me how I'm allergic to everything. <laughs> but I eat it anyway, and then just like really sick. Yeah, like stuff for the consequences. <laughs> yeah, literally. Later. I'm like, a nugget is worth it. And yeah, it's like, no, it's not. It's always worth it. But Leon does chicken nu- gluten free chicken nuggets. So I'm a big fan of oh, gluten free. Um, Leon, China. if you'd like to sponsor the podcast, you know where to find me. I try. Um, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Oh, I love. Or would you rather um, duck-sized horses? Because I think that'd be really cute, and I'd pick them up. I don't. I wouldn't want to fight them. I just want to have them as a pet. Can you imagine having a little mini horse. I know. I'd love that. I think I'd like scoop them up and take them home with me rather than fight them. I think so cute. <laughs> um, what's the most ridiculous fashion trend you secretly love? Oh, secretly love. Well, I don't know if I love it, but I know that, is it like capris that are coming back in or mm-hmm. capris, however you say them, like little short yeah, the little cut jeans, off. they're coming back in. I don't know if I love them. I think one that I love that I haven't actually worn yet is like the really, really short frilly shorts. Have you seen them? They're like hot pants, like yeah. tiny little frilly shorts, but I think they're really cute. They're super cute. I think I saw Camilla Cabello wear a yeah. pair of those. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be like brave enough to wear them and there's a time and a place because I think you're like your bum's half out, but I think there's a time and a place for that. I feel like you've got the legs for that. <laughs> I could wear that. I, I think when you've got an ass like mine, you can't get away with stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, I always think like when you're really curvy, you can get away with so much le- like less. Like mm. if you, if you, I've got these friends who are just so slim and they've got like really beautiful small everything yeah and er, they could literally wear like a (laughs) see-through t-shirt tank top and it looks Mm -hmm. so elegant if i wore that i would look like a trash (laughs) raccoon things out it's definitely coming back in though because i've got small everything and it's definitely coming back in as like trendier to have that so i'm just like embracing it or whatever love that (laughs) um if your life was a movie oh what would the title be and who would play you oh god it would be like chaos or like, God, no no time for anything. Um, Who would play me? Everyone says I look like Lily Collins. So I've got to go with Lily Collins. I see that. That's, She's fit. Yeah. Well, I love her. Thank you. And <laughs> Emily in Paris. Yeah. Emily Started Paris. again today. Yeah. Oh Came God. out today. I didn't 50, even know that. 50th August. Oh my God. Favorite show. I love it. Yeah. I'm so obsessed. Good. I start watching myself. I know. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's, it's just so, so good. It's it is good. Um, What's the strangest talent you have? that you would totally win in a quirky contest? I'll probably do an Australian accent. I mean, it's pretty good. I do. I, I love accents. Like, literally in the office, I'll always be like Scouse or American or Australian. I just love accents. Me, I do too. I could speak in them all day. I feel like my accent's just so boring. I want Australian. I, I, I love your accent. I feel like, because in Australia, we don't really have like regional accents. It's just yeah. like, you're either really, it's like varying degrees of Australian. You're like yeah. either really Australian, a little bit Australian or like posh Australian. There's yeah. no, there's no like regional accents. So yeah. when we moved here when I was younger, I used to find like people's accents so fascinating. I love the Irish accent. I love the Northern yeah. Irish accent. Like Scouse and like, I love a Scouse accent. Loads of different accents. 
friends. In, yeah. But I think when my boyfriend's like, from up there and he, I'm like, obsessed he? with his accent. Oh, yeah. I just like speak to me all day. I love Literally it. All day. But I think like, I'm like say pack of a crisp. I know <laughs> pack of a crisp. I love it. But I think because we have loads of like international clients, they don't understand. They're like, oh, we're coming down to London next week. We'd love to grab a coffee. And I'm like, I'm in Manchester. Like that's I'm just four and a half hours yeah. away, love. <laughs> Work. and they're like you guys have the cutest accents they don't understand that everyone has different accents do they i know they don't grasp it but yeah i do wish i have more of an interesting accent should i teach you some australian yeah okay so if you want to say i mean obvious ones right like avo like you know etc avocado yeah. etc avo mm -hmm. afternoon avo. um some more niche ones would be uh how you tracking oh what does that, does that how that you tracking means like what's your eta Oh, really? It's like, hey, tracking. Is that you, like a common thing? Yeah, you wouldn't say, hey, like, what time are you going to be here? You'd be like, hey, tracking. Hey, tracking. Hey, tracking. Um, oh, we so also chill. say things like, oh, that's a bit pedestrian. What does that mean? A little bit pedestrian. It means it's a bit basic. Oh, it's like a, it's a bit pedestrian. pedestrian. Because in Australia, it's so hot. If mm -hmm. you're a pedestrian, you're not in a car. Like you're a bit yeah, basic. Yeah, you're a bit basic. I mean, obviously I walk everywhere in Australia because I'm like, <laughs> give me the suntan, please. But you're a bit pedestrian. Oh, I um, love that. What else can I tell you? Oh, we, <laughs> you have like a doof doof. So a, do <laughs> a doof doof is a party. So it's like doof 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 doof. <laughs> and then you have a bush doof, <laughs> which is like you have a party in the bush. Oh, you have a house I've doof. I've never heard that. So that's good. A party doof, in doof. the bush. Does that party mean in the an bush? Party? Out, outback party. Yeah. Wow. I've heard of the outback when it's like, oh, she's the outback. What does that mean? The outback is like the desert with basically. the kangaroos. Yeah. Are there things like, you know, when people say like in Australia, they've got like massive spiders and like things hiding in your toilet. Is that real or not? Yeah. Is it? But you just don't like, like, for example, you wouldn't leave your gum boots outside and just stick your foot in them. Yeah. That'd be it's a like dumb idea. Sense. <laughs> you shake sense. them first, yeah. give them a tap. Oh, because that's <laughs> Maybe like, a spider comes out. <laughs> What's the worst thing you ever, you've ever seen? Um, probably a brown snake. Ooh. Brown snake's like the most poisonous snake in the world. What did you do? Two. You just run. Just chill. And oh. the thing is, they're quite aggressive. So, like, you don't yeah. want to tread on them because they will bite you. And then yeah. you'll probably really die. So maybe yeah. don't do that. Avoid them. Um, but they, they, and they like being in, like, dead leaves and, like, piles of logs. Ooh. And they're kind of the same color. So, oh. yeah. I'd but, still go to Aussie, though. I'd still go. But the thing is, like, you're more likely to die from being hit by a car yeah. than you are to die from that. Yeah. And also, like, sharks and stuff, they're everywhere, but they don't give a shit about you. Like, they're more interested in eating seals and fish. Like, yeah. you'd be very unlucky to get hurt yeah. in any capacity. It won't put me Just off. Just don't be a dummy. Okay. Don't stick yeah. your finger in a pile of logs. Don't be <laughs> like... a duff duff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, love it. Right. Back to the content. Um, if you were to swap lives with any fictional character for the day, who would it be and why? Oh, anything Disney. I, I can love see that Disney. For you. I love. Have you seen Enchanted? Yeah. Everyone says that I'm like Giselle from Enchanted because she's like a Disney princess in the real world, and she's like, she just doesn't have understand the concepts of things. Like I've got like no common sense, so I'm just like, oh, what's this? Like I'm always just in fairyland. So I think I'd probably be like a Disney princess or something. I love that. But I, I think there's so much value in seeing the world like that. Yeah. I'm a bit like that. I'm like, fuck it. Let's yeah. see what happens. Like my dad yeah. yesterday was having like a very serious conversation <laughs> with me about his career. And I was just like, YOLO, like, Bye. let's see what happens. And he's like, and he's like, he's like Millie. My family called me Millie. He's like, Mill, you're a 34 year old woman. I'm a 60 something year old man. He was like, it's different. I was like, no, it's not. It's fine. I was like, Colonel Sanders found a KFC when he was 64. It's fine. It's fine. And he's like, what do you want me to do? Set up a chicken shop. I was yeah. like, yeah, why not? Why not just try it? It annoys some people that mindset though it really yeah. triggers some people because i i always have a mindset of everything will just work out 100 like, even like i've just moved house and everyone's like so negative and they're like oh, you don't understand Vic. when you move house you'll find it so difficult and i'm like it'll be fine and it's been fine because i've said to myself it'll be fine yeah and like anything else i've just been like it'll be fine and i think that's why the business has done well because i'm yeah. just like it'll just be fine i'll just do it and it'll be fine i genuinely believe everything so i have this theory i've got this on my bag and I've brought this up before, but I didn't actually show you. <laughs> On my bag, I have a thing that says, do it for the plot. And I say oh, that I all the that. time, right? Do it for the plot. Do it for the plot. Do it for the plot. Because the ending is the same for everyone. We're all going to die. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. And so I kind of see life as this long sort of movie where you're the ca main character, the director, the producer, the writer, mm. all the things. And everything that happens in your life is just another notch in your story arc. So like if something goes yeah. wrong, great, you have a better, like, you like either a get a 
Yeah. Be over. You need twists and turns. That's why it makes it interesting, right? Mm-hmm. It's why when we're 90 year old grandmas with covered, hopefully covered in diamonds and surrounded by yeah. lovely pool boys. Oh, yeah, I'd love that. Li- sipping rose and being fat. Front, being fat, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're telling your grandchildren what you did with your life. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to be like, oh my God, I did this thing and it went really like yeah. You either get a great outcome or a great story. And yeah. I think people need to stop worrying so much about things going wrong because things always go wrong yeah but if it will always work out if you believe it will yeah whether or not something fails now or not it will always work out yeah because even when I was having times where I was like very mentally unwell and having all these problems I was just like it's fine because I know that this thing will happen and like I love like manifestation and stuff like I used to write in my journal every night my dream job's coming and I'd write it over and over and over and over again for like nights and nights and my mum was like Vicky do you need to like go out the house for this to happen I was like it'll just happen I don't know how and it just did yeah I'm a huge believer in manifestation we'll get into that in a second yeah that's the key what's the most embarrassing song on your playlist that you absolutely love to jam to Oh, I don't even know if I class it as embarrassing, but like me and my sister love anything Disney Channel, so like Hannah Montana, anything that's from that sort of era. We'd listen, we listen to weekly, like in the car. I love that's it. what keeps me happy. Anything Disney Channel, I love. Have you used the DJ X on Spotify yet? No, one of the girls in the office has that and it's really clever, isn't it? I need to use it. I don't understand. It's really funny because I always say I own a social agency, but I'm like the most technically challenged person ever. I don't, I like, I'm like a grandma. I'm like, I don't understand how anything works. So I need them to set it all for me. I don't understand it. <laughs> I have a Sonos, like two Sonos speakers that are plugged in at my house that I don't know how to work. No, I just like, give up. <laughs> I'm just, even if it's like I've done like an order on like ASOS or something, I'm like, how do I create a return? I was like, Lauren, you just do it, and she'll just sort it out for me. Yeah, I can't no, do we're it. we're in the same we're in the same thing. <laughs> right, final question: If mm. animals could talk, yeah, which one do you think would be the most sarcastic, and why? Or oh, probably cats. I've got oh. two cats, and they're just characters. They're little assholes. Yeah, they aren't are. They? they really are. Like, I, I love them cats. so much, but like they're so sassy. I think they would be so rude and sarcastic. Yeah. I love them. It's funny. There's a book that I read my kids. Oh God, what's it called? Do you think it's Gerald, Gerald the Fox or something? <laughs> it's about this fox, right? That is in London. And it's based on a true story about this um, writer that basically adopted this fox, this feral fox and fed it and mm-hmm. it became friends with it. And it goes and makes friends with this cat. And the cat is, is, is like really, really like Upper tea and only <laughs> eats fish and it's like what are you doing there silly I can't wait to have kids and read the books in the voices oh, I, like the I love it my favorite voices. Thing. I'm yeah. so excited for that we, we're currently going through the the poo phase so <laughs> every book is about bums and farts and poos so there's the poo in the zoo there's the dinosaur that pooed the planet oh my god uh, yeah I didn't know there was so many dragon variations dragon with a fiery bum oh my god I didn't even know these existed they're great they're great a stories. A lot to look forward to. All the things to look forward to. Well, thank you so much for humouring me with the quick fire questions. No, they were quite good questions, I have to say. Yeah, they are good questions. We love or would you them. rather particularly. So, bringing it back to your business and your beautiful self. <laughs> we're never serious on this podcast. Um, it's someone described this as a combination of Call Her Daddy and Diary CEO with the untingedness of Call Her Daddy, but the like topical <laughs> content of Diary CEO. I hope you don't make me cry like Diary of CEO podcast. They always cry. I feel like that is the MO, right? Like, how am I going to make this person yeah, cry? It's like we never substitute cry. teacher. We're like, how am I going to make you yeah, cry? I don't mind a cry. Yeah, we'll we, don't, we don't worry. I'm going to try not to make you cry. So, Obviously, we've spoken before Mm -hmm. and I know your journey from where you were in high school to where you are now. But for those people that aren't familiar with you or, you know, how you got to where you are, can Mm -hmm. you kind of fill us in on what that's been? I'll try and make it quick and like not too boring and long. Your story is not anything (laughs) but boring. Um, So I would say when I was younger, I was bullied quite badly at school. And I don't really know why. I think just because I was tall um, I had really, well, I just still do have big eyebrows, but I had really big eyebrows. People pay good money for those now. I know. I, I cherish them. I love my eyebrows now. And I think just because I've always been like very nice, like people pleasery and people used to take advantage of that. Um, so I was a big target at school. And I mean, like things like people would, you know, like in like American high school shows that like throw food at people and stuff. It was like that. Oh, um, God. and it was, it wasn't nice. So it, it really affected my confidence. Um, so when I got to about, I think I was like 19, 20. Um, I suddenly was hit with these panic attacks where I'd just like black out and faint all the time. And I didn't know what they were. And it felt like I was like having a heart attack and I didn't understand it. Um, and it got to a point where they were so bad and I tried everything to sort them out and they weren't going where I was just like, I can't, I can't live anymore. I can't work. And um, so I like quit my jobs and I was just at home. Um, and it was through like COVID, obviously, as so well as at home anyway. But it was like, even like after that, I still couldn't work. And 
I was just sat at home, like literally didn't want to get out of bed. And I was like, I need to use this time to do something. And I suppose I get my entrepreneurial side from my dad because he he works in in a high up role now in a business and he's always worked his way up. And I've really admired that. Um, so I think when I was using this time at home, um, I already had like a little social media blog and I like, understood it. Um, but I was really fascinated. Like I love psychology mm. and like how do humans behave? Like why do we behave in certain ways? Why do we like interact with things on social media and I just like fell down rabbit holes of like why do things work um why do we have these shopping habits and all that stuff and then I was like okay I kind of understand this so I started to reach out to local businesses and was like I'd love to try this out on you for like 100 pounds a month um and they were like yeah sure because obviously to them it was like bargain but to Mm. me I was like 100 pounds a month oh my god I'm rich I'm rich so I emailed like 50 people and I think like three of them were interested and I was like 300 quid in the bank like I was buzzing with that um and then I started to get these results for them and they were like you should be charging more than 100 pounds a month for that and I was like really and then I started to use time to basically use what I know to grow my own social media Mm. and that grew really fast and I think that that attracted other people who were from like London or the US or Australia and they were like we've seen your stuff like we want to work with you um and then I just started to it just snowballed so like within six months I went from like being at home like crippled with anxiety when when I say that I mean like I couldn't even go to like Tesco to do a food shop with my sister without feeling like sick or feeling like I was going to faint to like having an office space having a team um working with these huge clients so I've, I've sort of been thrown into business and had to learn like everything from like the legal sides to like how to manage a team and how to manage a business really quickly and I think I've I've learned a lot in a short space of time so now we're in a position where we're working with big brands like Netflix and TikTok and teaching them how to um you know use viral content and work with people who have got really high profiles to speak about the power of going viral um so now I think I'm in a position where where I'm going to is like speaking at events and speaking with people and trying to inspire people who were either in my position or in my position at school and trying to be like, it gets better, like keep going with it sort of thing. So I'm still finding my way, I'm still very new to it all, but it's been a lot to grasp in a really short mm. space of time. I think that's how I'd summarize it all. <laughs> how did you, oh, sorry, rude. <laughs> The news. My Scott, yeah, the news. Do you get the news as well? I've muted it. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, guys. Welcome to the You're brand of podcast. <laughs> um, this is very on brand for me. There's always something going wrong. Um, when you were at school, how did you, I mean, deal with this probably a really dumb question, mm. but <clears throat> I think I can relate in many ways. I, d- I definitely wasn't bullied like that, but mm. I was a target as well. And yeah. I think to your point around like maybe it was your height maybe it was your eyebrows whatever I actually think it was probably because you were different Mm. and you saw things differently and you do things differently and that's why you're so successful Mm. and I think a lot of the time kids particularly are very acutely aware of when things are different yeah and I think as an adult difference should be celebrated but we should also pass it on to kids so yeah when you were at school and high school and you were going through all of this like how Mm. did you deal with that because that must have been like to your use your words crip, like crippling yeah I don't know I think it's weird because I feel like I've almost like blacked loads of it out because I don't really remember Trauma, yeah. like I remember just being upset all the time but I think I just thought it was like a normal thing and I think when you say I was different it, it makes sense because I think I've always and I feel like I've never like really known anyone else to speak about this but I've always been very observative of people's behavior so I was very quiet at school and when I was quiet I'd always just be watching people Mm. and even like the girls who were like really popular at school like I'd be observing like why are they popular like Mm. how are they behaving and I think that's how I got into like the psychology side and even when I was getting into like owning the business and um, like speaking on stages I'd like watch people on YouTube and like really observe their behavior like how do they show up and come across and I think because I'd um, had so much damage I didn't really know who myself was so mm. I was trying to get that from pieces of people from ob- observing them and then I'd like copy them mm. so I'd be like okay so when they speak they do this with their hands or they speak like this and I'd try and like mirror that until I got like a big smush of 
loads of people's personalities like in one person which sounds really weird um i don't think it sounds weird at all does it make sense i don't know yeah i i definitely did that like yeah. when i first i mean it's not the same thing but when i first started posting content i had no idea what i was doing yeah and all most most of my content was video content right mm. and or live content and so yeah. and i had no idea how to do yeah. that so i would go and watch like alex hamosi Stephen yeah. bartlett um jake humphreys mm. like all of these people that i really admired and like loved their content and like what yeah. they were creating and i'd be like oh and like gary v like yeah. i realized that when he was talking he would like articulate his words yeah. and he'd be like, when i make a point he'd be like uh. yeah. and like i do that now yeah and it, i to your point about psychology i've found out why people do that and they, yeah. they've done the same thing they've understood why it's important yeah for you to be using your hands because it, cr it creates like almost a distraction so that when yeah. people actually listen to what you say mm. like with tiktok right when you're scrolling through tiktok and you mm. come across something that is interesting it will get stitched with something else like minecraft yeah. or whatever because your brain is distracted by the movement that yeah. you're watching that you listen to what's being yeah. said um, and it's fascinating. I think probably one of the reasons why you're so amazing at what you do is because you understand psychology. Mm. I think marketing period is psychology. Yeah. It is people's needs, wants, desires, mm -hmm. you know, challenges, motivations. Yeah. Like that is what viral is. Yeah. And you can't it. hit that, then like it always makes people like me laugh when you hear like people within businesses or marketing people being like, Oh, we're trying to achieve this, we're trying to achieve that, mm. and we just can't break through. And it's like because you're you're trying to market a business, not speak to people. Yeah, like, it's people it's all people, the time. Always, even if it's B two B, right? You're yeah. selling to a business. There's still a person behind that business yeah. making a buying decision. Yeah, it's so all it's, about yeah. perception, isn't it? I love yeah. perception. So, like, even when I was thinking about, I was like, right, there's so many people that do exactly what I do, and they're social media managers or they work in socials. I was like, how can I make myself stand out amongst everyone else? And I was like, how do people perceive me? So like I'd look at my own socials and be like, right, well, that's not really giving like luxury, like um, higher Vicky vibes is mm. what I'd describe as like the best version of myself. Becoming her. Yeah, becoming her. It wasn't, it wasn't giving that at all. So I always just think about how we are perceived and like you're perceived through your branding and how you speak and the results that we get. And I was just like, we're not utilizing that enough. And even now when I sort of speak to people who are in my position two years ago and they were like how did you like get to that point I want to do that and then I'll look at their social media and they're like filming in their bedroom with like a rubbish bin in the background I'm like that's not you're not going to be perceived as a leader mm. if you've like every little thing I think adds up to how you're perceived mm. so I think that social media obviously we all know it's fake like not it's not all real it's all about perception like mm. if you want to be perceived in a certain way you need to think about how that comes across on socials and everything is all about the people that are watching your stuff so if you're like oh I can't sell this thing or I can't do that thing there's a reason why it's not working and I think because obviously now I live and breathe social media I I know instantly like oh I know why that's not performed or I know why that Instagram reel has flopped or something because there's like little things that they're missing and they're mm. people are very selfish with their content aren't they so they're like hey guys come along with me mm. to a photo shoot and you've lost people like straight away mm. like it needs to start with something that really like grabs their attention really fast which which I love because I think it's all about it's like storytelling isn't mm. it it's like telling a story with your content I we, I did a um a masterclass yesterday with uh Sophie Miller who's the founder of mm. Pridgel Marketer she's brilliant uh, yeah she's amazing and uh we were talking about I feel seen content mm. so creating content that appeals to people from a resonance perspective of like they can see yourself in it yeah so that's why memes do really well because yeah. people create memes around a particular thing for a particular yeah group of people yeah. where they go oh my god I see myself in that like for example marketing millennials they do an yeah. amazing job mm -hmm. of creating content that specifically appeals to marketers only yeah like anyone else who wasn't in if you weren't in marketing and you looked at their page you'd be like I don't understand you just don't get it you don't get it you don't get but to this is. small group of people they're like oh my god yes I have yeah. a thousand tabs open at once and oh my god yeah. yes I always have three drinks on the table yeah. and oh my god I like they oh, every because we all have the same thing and yeah I think that I feel seen content is the center certainly of my personal branding strategy and hopefully of our marketing strategy as well of like who are we trying to reach mm -hmm. and this goes back to what we were saying earlier like we have customers and we have 
community yeah the community is building their personal brands mm-hmm. and so we need to create content that's going to appeal to them they might not buy from us right most people yeah. aren't going to have fifty two thousand eight hundred pounds a year to spend yeah. on an agency to manage their linkedin right yeah but they're going to be the ones that give us the credibility that mean that the customers do buy from us yeah the customers might not engage with our content mm. but they are going to buy from us right yeah and so i think you need to kind of break it down into two things and yeah. explore what your community gives a shit about who is your community yeah leverage their content like what they find important challenges loves i always think of uh, marketing as like you're selling painkillers lifestyles and dreams and Mm, you have to pick one of those i love that yeah yeah i think whenever we sort of like speak to brands about their strategy it's like the classic like 80 20 rule so it's like 80% 80% of people won't buy from you. They're just following you because they like you or you give them value. But that 20%, even if that could be like 10%, will buy from you. And that's okay. Like, mm. I think when we work with brands, they're like, well, you've got us like a million views, but you only got us this amount of sales. And I'm like, we're good at the views. Like, it's it's on them to think about, like, is the back end systems, is that all sorted out? Like, so that they can make sales from that. Mm. Um, because the content, like for us, going viral obviously it comes with amazing things like your sales increasing and stuff like that but we're the best at getting the views it's up to the businesses to have their website set up and make sure all the links are working right and stuff like that because there's only so much that we can do for them if that makes sense and even if like a video goes viral I'm like well what do you want out of it like if your page isn't set up right then there's no point in going viral and it's like people now you know when you go on their page they've pinned their most viral videos at the top because they want to be like oh look at me all these views I've got but it doesn't represent their best pieces of content if Mm. that makes sense like you always need to think about when someone comes on your page they decide in split seconds whether they're interested in you so it's not about pinning what the most viral piece of content is it's about pinning like what do you want them to see perception. like perception I, I love, love that perception that's such a good advice yeah it's uh, it's funny actually I was literally again talking to this about with, with mm-hmm. Sophie um we should three of us should go for dinner oh we should um she we were talking about how it doesn't matter how many likes and followers and views and all that kind of stuff you get on social media mm-hmm. and that because I think that attention is the number one asset every business can have right yeah. but attention only matters if you're going to generate an ROI from it. Yeah. Like there is no point in you having a million followers if none of those people are buying from you. And that's why I always think it's funny when I see companies like recruitment's a great example of this you mm. see recruitment companies posting content that only appeals to other recruiters yeah and it's like those people are not buying from you dude no. you're trying to you're trying to attract this company over here they don't know what a fucking candidate yeah. is they call them talent or employees right yeah you're using language that's so different from them yeah and, that, and then wonder why you're getting all these views from other recruitment agencies but yeah. not getting any sales yeah um and we were actually talking about that and then in context we had a client once that we got her all of these views and we, you know made her viral and all that kind of stuff mm. But the way that her business was set up was it was really difficult to understand what she was selling. Mm. So she got all these leads, but she didn't convert any of them. Yeah. And it's like, it's 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 so hard, isn't it? When you're an agency or you're a service yeah. provider, when you do a, a really good service yeah. and provide the ROI of that service. But mm. when the conversion doesn't happen on the other side, it can be tricky to kind of like quantify yeah. like why you're valuable. Yeah, because sometimes you go on people's pages and you, you're like, what do you actually do? Yeah. Like, what do you do? People, people have no time like everyone's busy so your content needs to speak to them so like that's why on tiktok like you go out to strangers so it always has to start with like i always start my videos in the same way and be like hi my name is vicky i'm 24 years old blah 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 because every single time i go out to people i'm a new person so if i just start by saying so today i went to london and i went on amelia's podcast like people would just tune out so i'd start with something and be like i just think incredible today hi my name is vicky and blah blah blah, I love blah. That. it was like a little like tv show episode um and it creates like a ripple effect and that, that's why i think that if you want to go big on socials you've got to have something that you're like known for that's your thing um even today me and laura were on the train and this woman was looking at me and i was like why is she looking at me she's like are you that social media girl and i was like yeah and i was like apparently i'm known as a social media girl so it's like you you have to have something that you're known for and that's your thing and like that's why like storytelling comes into it because like as much as obviously wasn't a fun time for me what i went through I've used that to create my story and like inspire people through that. And I think when you're selling anything, whether that's like a service or a product or a person, you have to think about the story behind it and like Mm. tell that because it's all about like human connection, isn't it? And people Mm. are like, um, 
they they connect with you they feel like they understand you on a deeper level and that's why I always say to people you know when they're like oh I don't want to put my face in front of the camera and stuff I always just want to be like I just want to be really harsh with you like you have to do it please Mm. like because I understand it's nerve-wracking and it's not a normal thing for people to get in front of the camera but it's like you've got to think about how strong is your your want for your end goal and that needs to overcome everything else Mm. and like force you to do it because so many people we speak to they're like yeah I really want to get results but I just don't want to show up in front of the camera and it's like I totally get it it's it's so unnatural but how badly do you want this this end goal that's that you're going to get through social media if you want it that badly, you'll show up in front of the camera. Yeah, it's, it's like, like I want to be skinny, to... but I also want to eat chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah. You can't do the two at you the same time. You can't have both. Yeah. You, but you need someone, I think, to give you a bit of like a kick up the bum sometimes mm. and be like, come on, how badly do you want this? You're going to have to show up in front of the mm. camera. And I think that, I really think that there's like, when you're born, you have it instilled in your brain what type of person you are. You know, sometimes you'll speak to like business owners and you'll just be like, I don't know if they're like right for this. Like I think some people you'll meet instantly and be like, they're going to go far. Like yeah. they're, they're like really driven to do it. Um, But I think sometimes when, especially when I do like social media strategies, I'll give them a 30 day plan and say, do this and it'll work. And they'll do it for like a week and be like, oh, I just couldn't keep up with it. And, you know, it's just not for me. And I'll be like, well, you don't want the end goals like badly enough. You'll make time to do something. Like mm. it was, even when I was growing my TikTok, I grew that by 10,000 in 10 days from posting three times a day. And I was like, God, this is doing me off. Like it was so much work to do that. But to me, I was thinking of it as almost like another business that I was starting. I was like, my TikTok is going to be my new business because I know I'll make profit from it. And I know it'll be a new thing, a new like revenue stream for me. So I was just thinking of it as another business that I was opening. And that was how I made the time for it. Mm. But I think there's only so much advice like we can give people they've got to have the want to do it and like mm. the desire to do it themselves mm. otherwise it's a waste of everyone's time yeah it's just a waste of money it's funny as well i think um you were saying there about uh how you always introduce in your tiktoks you're like oh my god there's so many things hi my name is vicky i'm talking yeah. about I always talk about format Mm. and how you have to own a format. Like, what's Mm. your format? Is it that you do long storytelling? Is it that you do short, snappy pieces of advice? Is it that you screenshot tweets and share? Like, everyone has a, Mm. everyone that I follow who's a big creator has a format. You know what to expect from them. Yeah. So, like, Elf Samba, for example, big fan. I love Elf. He's, he is my hype man. (laughs) He has a format, which is he screenshots viral content and then gives comment on it. Mm. Or he'll screenshot something that's really emotive and comment on it. Like, yeah. He's a social media guy. He doesn't really talk about social media at yeah. all. But like his format is that. And yeah. he sh- displays that he has an understanding of how social media works by mm. doing that. Yeah. And like for me, my format is this. I yeah. love doing this kind of stuff. But yeah. And we're trying to work out what the formats are on other platforms. <laughs> so we've done a big rejig at the minute. Um, but also on LinkedIn, I do these massive stories with pictures. Yeah. Like that's my format. Yeah. Like I think it's really difficult for people because they try, they see what Stephen Bartlett's doing and what Elf Samba's doing and what, you know, Jake Humphrey's doing or whatever, particularly mm. on LinkedIn yeah. and go, oh, I'll just copy them. And what they don't understand is those people have 20 person teams who are churning out five yeah. posts a day so and true. you can't emulate them. Yeah. A, because you don't have that capacity, but also B, you're not them. Yeah. And no one wants another Stephen Bartlett. They want yeah. a you. They want a Vicky Owens. They want an yeah. Amelia Sordell. So like, what's yeah. your unique value and thing. format and then just do that yeah because i mean you've probably had this but i get so many people that copy me in yeah. everything like your branding your videos word for word but to me i used to really let it get to me and be really angry because i'd be like this is taking me so long to do like why are you copying it but now i'll just be like well there's only one me they're not going to become big from being me no so it's, it's not going to happen so now i'm just like right whatever and it doesn't bother me but i think that even like with my social media and my TikToks, it's like an art form. Like mm. I sit there and like write like a script for it. And then I think about what's the hook and what's like the secondary hook. So like the first hook where it's like, um, you know, I've got a surprise for the team. And then the second hook's like introducing the video and being like, hi, my name's Vicky, blah, blah, blah. Rather than just going, so today I went into the office, mm. keeping people's attention. And then I always like to have something in it that's somewhat inspiring. So it's just like never in a million years that I think I'd be able to do this a year ago or something like that. And it's like, that's my format that I like to have. So it's hitting all of these like target content pillars. Um, so I think that people need to 
understand that in order for me to do that, like I'm in a position now where I'm able to sort of step away from the business a bit and just work on my personal brand and it's great. But it's like, you have to think realistically and be like, I work a nine to five job. Like when am I going to have time to do that? And just thinking about when can I actually slot that into my diary? Mm -hmm. Because if people are like, I really want to have 10,000 followers, then you have to be like, how? Like work backwards and be like, what type of content? When in the week am I going to sit down and do that? Like where am I going to get the inspiration from? Because it's, it's um, pointless setting goals that are too broad, isn't it? Mm. And just being like, oh, I want to make um, £100,000 this year. And you have to work backwards and be like, how? Oh. How many things am I going to sell? Yeah, why? Why do you want 10,000 followers? What's it going to do? Because yeah. people just want followers, don't they? And I think it's sort of because we've been brought up now especially like kids that are in school now they want to be an influencer and but they don't understand how hard it is to be an influencer and And also what that means yeah what does it mean like the pressure and even like in no ways am i an influencer but in the time that i I, don't agree with that as well at all i think everyone is an influencer yeah you have an influence marie and starbucks down the road influences me daily to buy a ginger (laughs) shot i can tell you that for free she's like you probably like spend so much money on that because of her yeah 100 (laughs) percent. she's influenced me yeah (laughs) so i think that even like with the platform that i've built up you you do get some nasty comments like but i think that what how does that make you feel do you find that triggering i've yeah definitely i i basically when i started posting i was like really open and i shared everything and it sort of bit me on the bottom a bit i think because i triggered something in people i think i've come to learn so i think a lot of people don't like seeing a young woman be successful and a lot mm. of people be like oh this is just from family money that you've got or um, why do they always go back to that i don't know i it's thought hilarious. it was not from family money um or they'd be like um this is too good to be true surely you're lying about this and that and people would were trying to dig up dirt on me and it was scary and i basically took a break from it and i went on this business retreat and i was like i don't know what i want to do because I feel like everything I say is wrong. And then one of my amazing business coaches was basically like, when you're successful, you'll trigger a reaction in people, whether that's good or bad. And that's when you know you're doing well. Mm. She was just like, even like if we go back to Stephen Bartlett, classic. Some people can't stand Stephen Bartlett. Some people love him, but he's doing well regardless. So mm. now I just post what I want to post and I know that it'll irritate some people. I just go, well... I'm doing well from it, so I keep doing it. TikTok's a f- savage it's platform as well. Like, so I always get the um, fake hair, fake face, oh, fake. God. And I'm like, you think my real, my fake face, <laughs> my real face is fake? Oh my thank, God, you. thank you. <laughs> Just naturally perfect. No, but it, like it's, now it's easy for me to do that. But yeah. like back when I oh, first started horrible. on TikTok, it was like really quite anxiety inducing. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, like you feel like you have to defend yourself. Yeah. But actually now I'm just like, I'm grateful for these people. Because I think there's a the couple of things here. One, whenever that happens, I think of the Marilyn Monroe quote, which is um, don't worry about when people talk about you. It's, it's something along the lines of don't worry about when people talk about you. Worry when they stop talking about you. Yeah. Um, I'm true. like, love you, Marilyn. <laughs> bestie um but the second thing is there is no one i've ever met in my entire existence who is successful who spends time on the internet telling people they're ugly yeah like i don't know a single troll that i would want to trade places with no um and the third thing as well going back to perception i have fun with it now Mm. so i have i've i have a bunch of like continual trolls yeah. and they, I, I know who they I are I know their names story, like whatever this, the same guy all the time Greg. like yeah hi yeah. Greg if you're listening yeah Greg Probably and there's is. another there's one I've got on the minute on YouTube called Alex so shout out <laughs> Alex you're going to be watching this love you <laughs> um, he and and what they do is they like constantly comment on my stuff to be fair Alex's stuff is pretty tame but yeah. some of the stuff I've had previously like Greg's called me some pretty nasty names and I was just like well I wonder if I can make this person my bestie so like yeah. every single time I get a nasty comment I'll go back to them with like something cheeky or something cute yeah. Like whatever so like you know there'll be a comment being like oh this is such a load of shit and i'll be like you know it's just easier to buy me flowers right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like is this that. your way of digitally putting my hair <laughs> love you too oh, I love <laughs> but, like that. here's a list of things that's way more like good use of your time than trolling i'll be like <laughs> cricket chess <laughs> cross stitch you look like a cross stitch guy greg yeah and i did this for a walk. so yeah i did this for like a year like every so time funny. this person used to leave this nasty comments mm-hmm. and if you want to know the story of greg go and look at my instagram <laughs> highlight reel because i have a whole highlight reel oh dedicated to Greg of all the screenshots of our like journey together who has the time to, to do this oh, like, I found crazy. it really, honestly my Instagram followers love it like every time I post about Greg they're just like Greg he's like, back he's they back. love him like they're so invested <laughs> in the story um but I was so kind to him and like it got to a point where like he 
<laughs> he literally, and I've got all the screenshots on my highlight story. Um, he literally was like, you know what? I've been so nasty to you for like a year. And he was like, you'll never mean back. And he was like, I rate that. <laughs> and he was like, I hope you have a great life. And I was you like, them eventually, I know. Won't you? And, and the thing is like, as I said earlier, these people are just people. Like mm. no one, I, I genuinely don't believe unless you have like a psychological condition. Mm. I don't think anyone actually wants to be nasty. Right. I think people are sad yeah. and they want other people to be sad because they're angry that they're sad. Yeah. And when you approach it from like, I feel sorry for you instead of you're being really mean. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you see that in the same way as those ghost girls yeah. that were so nasty. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. sorry for them. Yeah, I do. Look now, where yeah. you are now. Yeah. You're gorgeous. You're 24. You're more successful than any of them are probably ever going to be in their mm. entire existence at this age. Mm. Like, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. And I feel sorry for trolls because yeah. they're spending their life scrolling through content to be mean. Yeah. And I'm living my best life, you know, flying around the world talking about personal branding. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I do. I feel sorry for people. And I think that that's how I've tried to, like, understand things now because... Um, even like before I've done a couple of videos on it about like how confused I was when I started my business because I did all these things that I was so proud of and my bestest friends weren't even, mm. they weren't like saying, well done Vic or like, can I come and see the office? They just didn't say anything. And I was like, what? Like I couldn't understand it because mm. I'm like, if my friends started a business, I'm the first one yeah. to be like, well Hype done, woman. that's amazing. And I was like, why? Like, why aren't I getting that back? And because I didn't understand at the time, I was like, maybe it's me. Like maybe I'm posting about it too much. Maybe I'm being annoying or something like that. And then I think like my boyfriend explained it really well. And he was basically like, say if like you're in a relationship and you're dying to get engaged and you've been wanting it for months and months and then your best friend gets engaged out of nowhere, there's going to be a little bit of you that's a bit like, oh, like I wish that was me. Mm. But the difference between a good person and a not so good person is you're happy for your friend regardless. Like even if you are in that situation where you're like, oh God, I wish that was me. You're still like, do you know what? Congratulations. Like, oh, I hope that's me soon. Um, But the, the bad friend version of that is where they're not they're not doing that they're, and they're just going I wish that was me and they get really sour and bitter with you um and I think that that it always causes reactions in people and now it's like especially that owning businesses you have to be friends with people that are supportive of you mm. no matter who's doing better or it shouldn't be a competition with people like there's there's more than enough room for everyone to succeed so now I just look at people who are sort of sat like just doing hate comments or even if it's like you hear that someone said something about you and you just like god like, who has the time I don't have the time for it wish everyone well like I just think that it's when people are in a place where they're not happy that's when they'll sit and make comments about other people I think you've got to be in a good place to not bring other people down I think do you know what's funny I think about the the friend thing is I was having this conversation also with my boyfriend the other day <laughs> And um, he was saying, and I don't know if it's a woman thing, but I can only relate to it as a woman. So mm. apologies to any men listening to this. And they're like, <laughs> we do that too. <laughs> um, including Ollie behind the camera who just raised his hand. You don't even know what I'm going to say yet, Ollie. You've raised your hand about something that you have no idea what I might say. Um, we were saying that it's when you're winning and you're super, superior mm. to, to your peer group it's really easy to support people because yeah. you're in a really good place and and whatever yeah and by the way when i say superior i mean in objectively looking at someone in that situation not yeah. feeling like that yourself yeah. um it's really easy to support other people because you're doing better mm -hmm. but when you're doing worse than other people mm. it's really hard to mm -hmm. support other people's wins yeah and actually i take great pride and re like this year has been really rough for business for cloud mm. like We've made a couple of changes in the business mm. and I'm more than happy to talk about that. I think yeah. so many business owners are just pretend that everything's going well yeah. because they're worried about the perception yeah, of yeah. that externally. Yeah. The reality is business is hard. It is. And this year has been harder than any year for the last five years because yeah. everything that's happened in the world. You've got elections, you've got wars, you've got all of these things going yeah. on, which makes decision making on large scale investments like personal branding and social media quite difficult yeah. and quite lengthy, which means that you know all these things get squeezed. Mm doesn't mean that like, we're doing terribly. It's just yeah. we're not doing as well as we could be. And yeah. that's frustrating. And it happens. Like no one's business is always like, woof. No, it's the dips. reality is it's like you have ebbs and flows, right? Yeah. And we're year four now and like, we're more established and we've got bigger yeah. overheads and all of those things. But yeah. one of my friends right now is killing it. Like mm. she is absolutely smashing it. Shout out Charlotte, like founder of TFR, The Fitting Room. Um, She is just, if you, like you should follow her on LinkedIn. Her content is 10 out of 10 as well. Amazing. And she does these incredible collaborations and these incredible brand activities 
activations, this incredible social media stuff for so many massive, massive, massive brands mm -hmm. like Sky, Now TV, like wow. all of these incredible businesses. And I'm like, I'm fucking proud of you. Yeah. Like she'll like she'll message me like, oh, you know, we just did this thing, and I'll be like, I'll message voice note her being like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Is the best. It's like we won the championship game. Oh, it's the and, best. But like that, that you, that is, I think, the sign of a true friendship. But I yeah. think you only get to that point, particularly when you're running your business, when mm. you have, when you understand that, like you winning or someone else winning is great is all great like yeah i just want everyone to win like yeah. I, I i'm such a we were saying before we started recording like about our mutual friend sedge like yeah. she wants everyone to win so she yeah. just connects people without any agenda because yeah she's such a hype woman yeah the more you can surround yourself with those kinds of people i actually think the more successful you are because yeah. people at the top i think jay-z says it people at the top don't compete they collaborate yeah like you don't see that. like bullshit happening like misogyny and like racism you don't see yeah. that at the top no because they haven't got fucking time for no, it you got time <laughs> everyone wants to make it. money even so. in, even with people in your own industry like obviously every industry is like saturated and i'm just like there's more than enough clients for us all and money for us all and success for us all so it's never like oh i think i'm better than this person yeah. or whatever it's just like just celebrating everyone's wins yeah. and it's not i think i think i don't know i don't know whether we've got that installed in us maybe because we've experienced what it's like when people don't celebrate your wins and how how hard of a feeling that is and mm. how horrible it is to go through so i'll like now go like above and beyond mm. for people to be like i'm here for you like i'm so proud of you and like send people flowers and stuff and i think that when i was like speaking about this on tiktok obviously you get you trolls and you hate comments but the, a common theme was like saying that um you know you shouldn't be searching for validation like why mm. are you searching for validation and i think it's just the i mean everyone has different things that they want to get out their friends but the main thing i think is just you, your friends should be happy for you and should mm. be you hype women and because I think a lot of the time when I would speak about it to people they'd just be like well you've got friends for different reasons maybe these friends just aren't the friends you should speak to about your business and I was like my business is my baby I'm proud of it I don't want to speak about it all the mm. time because obviously some, there's a time and a place to speak about it um, but I was like I want to celebrate the, these things with them and I didn't want to just sit there and pretend they weren't happening or even I would use like dull down what I do and mm. if I was going on like a work trip I'd just be like oh I'm going on a holiday next week like I just wouldn't speak about it because and it's quite sad when you think about mm. that, isn't it? Whereas now with my friends, I'd be like, oh my God, this is happening. They'd be like, oh my God, that's insane. Send me pictures, do this, do that. Yeah. And it's just so, it's like a breath of fresh air when you find people like that, isn't it? It's so hard to find and to attract those people. I think also like, you're, I think whatever that quote is around the five closest people to you is who you are. Yeah. I think that's, it's really important to, feel like you're getting value out of the people around you and I don't mean that from a transactional perspective I mean yeah. that from a do they enrich your life yeah they don't if they don't enrich your life like you have drains and you have radiators right yeah I love that are they radiators or are they drains yeah and I think drains are okay because everyone goes through that time where they need to where they need other people's energy yeah. to, to, to just live yeah I've been in there you've been there like we need that support from those people but if you've got people around you that are constantly draining, mm. that's not a good value exchange. No. Like you're not adding to their life because they're not standing on their own two feet. Yeah. And they're not adding to your life because they're sucking all your energy out. And yeah. I think it's really important that you recognize that kind of pattern. And it's not like you're falling out with people. Like I've I've had loads of friends that were, for me, they weren't necessarily for everyone, but for me, really draining. Yeah. And we just naturally have just yeah. parted ways. And there's no big fight. There's no, no whatever. It's just that I don't really want that person as close to me anymore. Yeah. So we just create some space. Yeah. I'll still support you. I'll still chill for you. I'll still be yeah. there if you need me. But like, you're just not part of that group anymore. And yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think when you're younger, you put so much emphasis on how many friends you have. Mm. And that is the, the measure of how amazing of a person you yeah. are and actually I think as you grow older and I think having a business expedites this yeah that circle gets closer and closer and closer and closer because yeah. and smaller and smaller because the you have such a limited amount of time yeah the time that you do have you want to invest in people that mm. you really want to invest in yeah like I have kids as well so I've got two children and a Crazy. business and a this that and the other thing I have like multiple things that I need to spend time on yeah if you're not adding to my life like I'm really sorry but I, I got just time. don't have time for it time. <laughs> love you lots but not yeah. today like, yeah and it's not, I think it's quite nice that because it's like when you say like oh I don't have time to sit and talk about someone or like, you genuinely don't have time for it mm. so it's like you've only got time 
for, for things the way you want to celebrate people rather I've than I've walked away people. from conversations with people before <laughs> so I have a rule I don't bitch about other people mm -hmm. period yeah. and I don't allow like constant complaining no. so if, I'm happy to sit there and, and you could like if you sat down and you were like Amelia, like, fuck, this has just happened. I'd be like, tell me. Yeah. Like, offload. Like, yeah. I'm that girl to offload to. And the, but yeah. every conversation after that needs to be about a solution. Yeah. I don't want to hear a single complaint after yeah. that. If you come to me with the same complaint over and over and over again, it yeah. will jar the hell out of me. And I yeah. just won't. I will just, my brain will go, oh, kitten. Yeah. And go over there because I don't want to hear it. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's really, really important. The, the bitching about other people thing, everyone does that. Mm -hmm. And that for me is like a non-negotiable. I will never sit there and allow someone else to, even if I hate the person yeah. You're talking about. I don't hate Just anyone, go, there's but better things to speak about. I don't want to spend my because your energy lives and dies where you spend it. Yeah. If I'm spending my energy talking about someone I don't like, mm. I'm giving them energy. Yeah. Why would you, your energy is the most precious time. thing? Why are you doing that? Yeah. They don't deserve it. No. No. My time is very valuable. Yeah, we've got other things to do. We, we, got have, businesses we, have, we to run. have businesses to run and <laughs> outfits to pick and nails to paint, babe, and like, children to look after, and children to look I'm after. I'm not at that point yet, but. Yeah. Hats off to you for doing that. I can Mental. only imagine what that's like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, single mom life. It's you know what? I'm I'm very lucky that I have a very good relationship with my ex husband, mm. and we co parent like chef's kiss. Like that's brilliant. We we have worked really hard to be mates, mm -hmm. so that it, that's for the kids basically. Yeah. Um. So I'm very very lucky, but also a week. Every what every second week, I have them for a full week, and it's like I have no nanny, I have no childcare, <laughs> I have no nothing. And not to say that I wouldn't want those things, but like for me, it's like, this sounds really silly, but it was really important that I still maintain a slightly chaotic life because mm. I feel like it makes me appreciate it more. Yeah. Like the nice things that we can do together. Like I'm, I've got friends and this is, it's not to say that this is a bad thing at all, but they have like nannies and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And that's great for them. Mm. But like for me, like I kind of want the scrappiness. I yeah. quite like the like chaos in the morning. It's like, shit, I forgot to make their lunch. Yeah. Or like, fuck, they haven't eaten yet. <laughs> yeah. It makes <laughs> like this morning fun. I was like, shit, it was, I had to get them to their, <laughs> their club at like court to eight. I had to leave. And it was like, like 7.39. I was like, I haven't even fed them breakfast yet. <laughs> Just like shove like, some fuck. Stuff <laughs> Yeah, literally. We, mom, they love, they love those things though. Cause I'll make like, they call it like a mummy sandwich. It's like a peanut <laughs> butter, honey and peanut and banana. Cause I'm like, you got protein, you got veg, you got whatever. And you've got bread like take it and they're like <laughs> just oh, enjoy it sandwich. yeah eat in the back of the car <laughs> like whatever it's chaos but I've got we love it to look forward to we love it I'm enjoying um, on the topic of friends like mm -hmm. when obviously I, I want to move the kind of conversation along a little bit but I just want to mm -hmm. kind of round off with this this point have you found that as you've grown your business and you've become more successful because you are very visible mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. have you found that you've sort of lost some friends along the way yes and how, how's that how's many that? friends yeah um i don't or know not friends as the case may be yeah i think i think i just don't like understand it so i think that even when i think i've found friends and i think because i, I had such a bad experience at school and i didn't experience having friends for years that i get really excited when i meet someone that i like and i'm like oh my god we could be friends and i get yeah. really really excited and sometimes my boyfriend's like you need to tone it down a bit because not everyone has your best intentions at heart or yeah. like you know they might want to use you for something or whatever so i'm just like okay he's your protector he's my protector yes i love that he's very he's very a golden retriever energy person which i love um so yeah so i think even when i think i've found someone and I'm like oh my god like we can go out for coffee and I'll support you in this and I'm like you can use my office if you want to work in there and then I think that when you're when we meet and we're like at an equal level and then our my business will grow and things will happen they'll become less and less interested or like the energy will be off and you can feel it and I'll be like what have I done and hmm. the only thing I can put it down to is that they they don't like it that someone's more successful than they are that's the only thing I can put it down to um, are you an overthinker? I'm a massive overthinker. I've tried mm. not to be because I think when you have a business, loads of things happen that you can spiral into. And I've tried mm. to just been, I always say like, what would Harry or Vicky do? She wouldn't overthink about this. She'd just carry on and keep going with it. But yeah, I massively overthink things. I'm like, did I say something? Like, have you read Attached? No. Never should read it. What's it's, it about? it's really good. Um, it's about, basically, it's about romantic attachments, but it also, mm -hmm. it also applies to like everything in life and it's about right. how you form relationship attachments with people right. so there's four different types of attachments there's anxious secure avoidant and then there's like confused which is anxious and avoidant mm. secure is 50 percent of the population yeah. where it doesn't matter how you behave to me i i am cool yeah so you could like not text me you could read my message and not text me back and i just be like Meh, okay whatever yeah, like carry busy. on with my day she's busy yeah yeah i wouldn't be like oh my god what have i said yeah 
Anxious is the, oh my God, what have I said? Why? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then avoidant is the, fuck you then. Yeah. <laughs> Push you away. The opposite way. Anxious <laughs> avoidant, which is the really mad one, is mm-hmm. people who get the anxiety about it, but their response is like, fuck you then. Yeah. And so they're like the double whammy of like yeah. really anxious that people, they want people to like them, but also pushing people away at the same yeah. time. I used to be really like that. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh my God, do they like me? Well, fuck them. I'm just going to like yeah. reject them before they can reject yeah. me. So I don't care. Like I right? messed you, but have I done something wrong? Yeah. But now I'm just like, that's just like giving weak energy. Like I don't need to, I, if I know myself, I've not done something wrong. I've acted, you know, how I always act then it's a them problem. Mm. That's what I think of now. Obviously, if there's if it's like your best friend and they're not speaking to you, there's obviously a problem. And you'll mm. be like, can I ask if like if something's happening? But now I think about it less. Like I used to overthink everything and be like, oh my God, she's not liked my story that I'm like, just bought this or whatever. And I'm just like, whatever. Like I know that I'm, I've not said anything that's wrong. And if, if there is this a weird energy, I'll just bring it up and be like, is there everything, everything all right with us? But I think it's really hard when you own a business, when it's doing well, because you're always like, is it that it's triggering something in them? But then you mm. don't want to be like, "Am I tri- is my success triggering you? Because that sounds really big headed to say. Mm. But you don't know what position people are in as well. Like they might be having like a really difficult month or something. You've just got to be sympathetic of it. I think also like 99% of what we think and what we're worrying about isn't true. No. Like most of the t- in most cases, if someone doesn't text you back, it's because they're busy. Yeah. In most cases, if your mate didn't like your story, it's because they probably didn't even see it. Yeah. Like they they left their story on auto. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? And there's yeah. so many things that we don't factor into our decision making or our yeah. conscious stuff. Yeah. Um, that impacts how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. It isn't actually true. Mm-hmm. So, and it's yeah. even like on the other side of it as well. Like I've had friends say to me, like, Vic, have I upset you because you didn't do this? I'm like, oh my God, I just completely forgot to reply to it. Yeah. So it's like, I see it both ways now. But I think now, just like going back to things like energy and time and stuff, just because I'm, I'm so busy and like I really do like love the life that I've created at the minute, that I just like everything to me, I'm just like positive, happy, good vibes. If it's not that, don't want it so now if someone is you know brings up something to me or even if it's things like i was in like the daily mail and i get it gets so so many hate comments in the daily mail i'm just like whatever it makes me laugh you should frame them yeah i, probably should, I was i did like an instagram post on them i was just like it's just funny Doesn't i've got um in my home office i've got a framed um one of my posts was put on reddit before oh god i've got loads of threads on reddit so I'm, it's my oh god don't moment. google myself and like some of the comments are like horrendous so i <laughs> i screenshot the like post with the comments and i have it framed on my desk oh yeah you just gotta make fun of it Someone said something I about... I made it, babe. Someone was I have saying, a Reddit thread. <laughs> I've got a, I, I don't want to know if I've got a Reddit thread. But someone, you probably do. You should frame it. Oh it's about, like, honestly, I love that. I'm like, you want to talk about... You've created a thread about You're, like, me. You're going out your way to like, speak about me. I'm so famous. Someone, <laughs> no, I'm literally a celebrity. I'm so relevant someone to your was life. Someone like, um, something on my Daily Mail post about like call me an OnlyFans person. Oh, like, what? That's what? I was what? like, what? That is everyone's go-to <laughs> comment. I get it all the time on t- They're like, oh yeah, advice from an OnlyFans yeah. model. I'm like, or whatever, like got, like, Steve. Uh, yeah. You couldn't even afford it if I was, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, you wouldn't be on my radar if I was an The subscription is out of your budget. <laughs> <laughs> we just got, like, I would used to sit there and be like, oh my God, like, no, I'm not. Like, do you want to see my proof of earnings? Like, yeah. do you want to, and I'm just like, I'm not. And I'm just like, who cares? Whatever. And also, like, you think I'm pretty enough? Thanks. Yeah. Like, so what if you are an OnlyFans model? Like, who cares? Like, it's like, make your money, do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Don't honestly, have time for the grow energy. Up. No, grow up. That's my favorite insult. My, my brother gets really annoyed at me because he's really, really clever. <laughs> he just said, he, like, he works with, like, very, in, like, intelligent people in the defense industry. So he's, oh like, super God. smart. And he'll tell me something really, really interesting. I'll go, oh, grow up. Grow up. And he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, grow up. And he's like, we get so, like, I, and I always do it at the moment where he says something really mature. He goes, like, grow up. Grow Elliot. up. Is he younger or older? Younger. So he gets like, so mad so you're at like me. your little brother. I love it. Does he feel <laughs> I like see the rage or is he still like... Yeah, yeah, I treat him like my little brother and he hates it. Mm. Grow up, Elliot. How's your family been with like your success in your business? You know what? And this is something I wanted to say to you as well about your friends not supporting... Mm. Friend, ex-friends potentially not supporting you. Mm-hmm. When you start something... When, you're, when you've got no history in your family of entrepreneurship or, do, or taking risks, like my dad is really successful but worked in, in employment. My mum, you know, is the most amazing mum in the world. And like, to be fair, she runs her own business, but it's it's um, holiday rentals. So it's mm-hmm. not, it's, you know, we have four, and not to downplay what she does at all, it's a fucking hard job, but yeah. we had four holiday rentals that we had um, and she kind of manages the renting out of them and whatever. Mm-hmm. 
So she's done that. But there's been no one in my business, that in my family, sorry, that were really like entrepreneurial and risk takers. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are that black sheep of the family, yeah. and also to your point around at school, like I was different too. So I didn't really have any friends at school because mm -hmm. I was like, the I'd, I wasn't, re I would say, I was definitely bullied at primary school for sure. I remember when I broke my arm and I had it in a full cast, this girl like grabbing me, dragging me around the back of a tree um, so that the teacher couldn't see. It. And she grabbed my arm and like, like was trying to like break the cast. Oh. This was when I was in year like five. Oh my God. Horrendous. Oh, Horrendous. I even fathom that. That's mad. But like kids are stupid. Yeah. Um, so like, I, I can relate to your experience mm. for sure. But when it comes to like family and friends and stuff, when I first founded the business, they were all like, oh, why do you want to do that? Like, that seems like, you yeah. know, you, you're in a safe job. You know, you might get promoted soon and da 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 da. Like, yeah. we're in a pandemic. Yeah. Maybe don't do that. Yeah. And I think sometimes social media perpetuates this this kind of narrative of like, well, fuck the haters. Like they're not supportive of you. Just yeah. like cut them off. And actually yeah. two things can be true at all the same time. Your friends and family can be really supportive of you, but also be worried for you mm. because when they say you can't, they normally mean I can't. Yeah. I couldn't do that. So you shouldn't yeah. do that because I'm worried that you're going to fail. And if you fail, that's going to make me sad. Yeah, and I think true. a lot of people who have friends that don't support them, Mm. to your point around you know if you're doing well and, and it sort of tails off and you don't get that like hype up energy yeah. sometimes it might just be because they're worried that maybe they can't do that and yeah. and that I think there needs to be some perspective that like everyone is so insular and we all just think about ourselves all the time we never factor mm. in like what other people might be thinking and it, yeah. just because they're not supportive doesn't mean they aren't supportive it's just because yeah. they're worried for you yeah and my parents were definitely like that when I founded the business they were like oh you know like maybe you shouldn't be doing that yeah. and it took them three years really for them wow. to be like oh wow like okay you have a team and yeah, like you've done and it's not that they weren't supportive they of course they were yeah but they weren't that like oh my god you're gonna smash yeah. it ah, which is like i'm like for everyone they don't understand as well sometimes i think because no, it's they such don't. a new we're different. thing it's a new wave of like young people starting businesses and social media and even like personal branding is like fairly new even though it's you know yeah. i feel like it's been around but i feel like it's now it's more important isn't it yeah um but yeah even like with my mom when i was you know like started to make good money and I was like I need to stop paying my VAT bill and stuff she was like Vic you've got to stop there because you're gonna to have to stop paying loads of tax she was just like it worries me that you're making this money but I was like why is it worrying you like it should excite you and she was just like no no it stresses me out like but that's I'm, her own insecurities yeah. about money yeah it's, it's funny actually because I I really think that the internet has done two things mm -hmm. one it has opened, it has never been easier to start a business. Mm. You can go on Shopify and open a fucking account and do drop yeah. shipping in like 15 minutes. Yeah. You can go on YouTube and learn how to code a website. Like yeah. when I founded my first business, which failed spectacularly year two, <laughs> by the way, um, I literally taught myself how to do everything to build that business from YouTube. Wow. For free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, after I just paid all this money for a stupid degree that I had no interest <laughs> in attending whatsoever, mm -hmm. I learned everything about that business. And we were in the Daily Mail all the time. We had Colleen Rooney wearing our clothes, Daniel wow. Lloyd wearing our clothes. We had like, it was really successful for the period of time in which it was successful. And then it wasn't. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think the, in, and so the, my point being the internet has made it really easy to start a business and start a career and do whatever the fuck you want. But also on the flip side of that, because there is so much options and because this everything is so digitalized and everything is so optimized mm. we have completely lost the ability to be able to communicate properly yeah and so kind of bring it back to what you were saying with um you know your friends and you know your mum kind of saying oh like i'm not sure about that da, da, da. Mm. she they're all living in this world of like sending whatsapp messages and sending you know Instagram stories and sending whatever mm. that we've lost touch with like how to actually have conversations about yeah. stuff it's like yeah. why do you think that mum yeah yeah like go further into depth with yeah it. why do you think about it? but we don't ask that anymore yeah because even things like as well um because we don't do this as much we don't have chats conversations I prefer mm. in stuff I hate tech like I can't do like texting oh, and my friends like I've got about 74 unread <laughs> yeah WhatsApps. I just can't my friends know text. if you want to get a hold of me call me because I will yeah. not reply to you like, I just prefer in person stuff but even things like the new wave of having a personal brand and stuff I had to get past the massive block of mine when I was posting three times a day of going people are going to find me really annoying people are going to think I'm really up myself because I'm posting three times a day and people probably do they think Jesus how many times do you need to post and say that this happened or say the same thing over and over again but 
But to me, I'm like, repetition is key with social media. You have to keep, isn't it like, you got to say something seven times till- I think it's 16 now. Is it? Jesus, I'm yeah. 16. People, people have to see and hear and know you so many times till they get it in the head and go, oh, Amelia's that person that does this. So- for me, like I had to get, I had to get over that block. Even when I was posting three times a day, I remember I was with one of my friends, and I was like, "By the way, just to pre-warn you, like if I keep coming up on your feed, like you don't have to like like it. I'm sorry, it's annoying." My friend was like, "It's not annoying." She was like, "That's amazing," and I was like, "I've, I've got a good friend in you there yeah. <laughs> that you say that." Um, but yeah, you have to sort of adapt with what's working and that's a lot a block for a lot of people they'll go oh I don't want to post three times a day because that's really annoying and I'm like why is it annoying like you got your, your personal brand is your business so you've got mm. to put yourself out there and people probably will be like oh you know she's got a podcast who does she think she is and it's just like I'm Amelia Sordell and I've got a podcast you have to like Amelia oh, yeah. fucking Sordell <laughs> like I'm allowed to have <laughs> Vicky a podcast. fucking Owens yeah like I know what I'm speaking about <laughs> and like you can own it and you, you have to be not up yourself. You have to be like your own... Confident. Big, you got to be your own biggest fan. And I do this because I wins. want to talk to you. Yeah. Like, ge- like this is genuinely why I do that. I don't... I, I obviously, there's other elements. As yeah. Well as, like, we get, like, very... As we were talking about earlier, we get, like, yeah. you know, like, three million views on the social content yeah. of this podcast every single month, which nice. is, thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate you. It allows us to conversation <laughs> to happen. And also allows me to pay Ollie in the background, who's very expensive. <laughs> Works with Netflix, by the way. Wow. Um, and, yeah, I think but for me this is an excuse to have conversations with people like you mm. who are like-minded like doing really fucking cool shit mm. and it's much easier for me to go hey Vic like I know you don't know me but like do you want to come on my podcast and it's to be like hey do you yeah. want to have a coffee people are like oh why do you want a coffee yeah. I'm like but you can come on my podcast yeah, yeah I'd love to like and so for me it's kind of a way of facilitating the conversations that I really want to have in person mm-hmm. but otherwise don't really have an excuse to have yeah um and i because i think the digital world has made us all like oh well let's just have a phone call and instead or yeah. like let's just have or, or worse let's have a zoom yeah no thank you oh no thank you come meet me in my office yeah i'll buy you lunch yeah we'll have a chat it'll be great no for that yeah how, do you, how have you found that you've gotten over you know when people have you've had obvious comments where it's like who does she think she is or relentless do you just sort of just go whatever i so fun fact my i was not in a group chat there was a bunch of girls i was friends with Mm. um and they were all in a group chat and i wasn't part of that group chat and they were all screenshotting my content posting it in there talking about how embarrassing i was and my friend who was in there and fair play to her like she defended me but she screenshot them and sent them to me and goes just fyi these are not your friends and i remember and i've made but i've made content from it yeah, I'm like, these Use people it. used to say I was embarrassing, but I'm not embarrassed of the money I've made, the business I've built, the team I've hired, the yeah. following I've got, the fact that I've got a book coming out in the 1st of December that someone has paid me to write. Oh my God, that's amazing. Like, I'm, it's a published book wow. because of the embarrassing content mm. I post online. Be embarrassed for me. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not embarrassed. I'm loving life, babe. <laughs> no, yeah. You, loving life. You've got, and they'll probably look at that and be like, oh my gosh, she's just so off the She's so she's embarrassing. So, yeah, cool. Be embarrassed like, Yeah, me. it is kind of like, it's not In embarrassing. your group chat. <laughs> yeah. And even like when things like turn back around, like when those girls that bullied me, like I sent a CV to apply to work for me. I was That's literally like, I was literally like, what? But like I, because I got loads of comments like, did you hire them? Did you hire them? No, obviously, no, I didn't hire them. But a lot of people were like, that's, um, I get, like, they could apparently, you know, get me in, in legal trouble because I'm not, yeah, discrimination. But I'm just thinking of it as, like, I don't want that energy in the office. It's not to say, you know, they've, they've changed. They've probably grown up, like, we were young and whatever. I've just moved on from it. But also, I think I'm within my rights to be like, I don't want that energy in the, within the office. You There's know? two things there. One, it's your fucking business. Yeah. Three things. Two, it's your fucking business. Yeah. Three, were they qualified for the job? No. <laughs> it's your fucking business. You can say no. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have no, like, people believe they have a right to everything. Mm. You have not, you have no right to nothing. Yeah. You have no right to a job, success, a degree, fucking airtime, mm. nothing. You have no right to anything. Yeah. Nothing. You have to create your own right for that. And I think if you believe that person was the right person for the role, you would have hired them. Yeah. But you don't. And so you didn't. Yeah. We move on. People change, you know. I wish them well. Good good luck for them. Drop the mic. I, I just love that though. I was bullied and then they applied for a job and I said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has. Bye bye. <laughs> has been a good like like the press love it. There's been loads of stories on it, and even that like 
I'm like, I'm like, oh God, it keeps coming up. Like people are going to be thinking that I'm like obsessed with it, but it's just like, it's just, it's the, a great just story. the story. It's just the story. It's that classic story of like, someone said you couldn't do something and then you did and it. You did. I love it. David Goliath. Like, mm, did it. I had a, so there was a guy, I'm not going to say his name because I don't, he doesn't deserve the airtime, but <laughs> there was a guy who um, is a very, very well-known, rich, successful entrepreneur who I got introduced to right at the start of Clout's journey. And I told him about the business idea and he was like, that's a terrible idea. He goes, the business is going to crash and burn. No one wants personal branding. Go and do marketing or something. Oh, it was like, dumb. It's a dumb. Crash and burn was his exact words. Lovely. And I use that as like the rocket fuel mm -hmm. to be like, well, fuck you then. Yeah. I'm use that as a chip on my shoulder. I'm going to go and prove you wrong. Yeah. Which is potentially quite insecure, but mm -hmm. was great because I grew the business. It was that we were like the 20th fastest growing startup in London for the oh, first wow. two years of business. Like we were 100% year on year and headcount like three years in a row. Crazy. Um, mainly because I had a massive chip on my shoulder. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, but he then went on Celebrity Big Brother no. because he was trying to build his personal brand. Oh and I'm just God. like, I'm so smug about it. He probably doesn't even remember the conversation yeah. at all. He doesn't even remember who I am. But I watched and I was like, hey. You're like, oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> What's like your your take on, you know, when people... I love when I'm being interviewed here. Yes, I, I love asking the you questions. That's one thing about me that Lauren will vouch for is that I ask people like a million questions. That's why you're successful. I love the curious curiosity and curiosity i live on chat gpt i'll be like hi chat gpt what's that no, 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 no. why is this that why is this why is this why, why is this why is this i love it so you know like when people say about starting a business i feel like steven said it again sorry i'm keep bringing up steven um barlet not steven. my friend steven not from <laughs> the hills steven. Steven. steven steven how like you know when you have like a chip on your shoulder or something and it's like people say are you succeeding for you or for other people, if that makes sense. Mm. So like, do you do what you do for you or does it start out of you're trying to prove people wrong? Because for me, obviously you do it for you. But for me, I really wanted to go, I want to get to a place where I can go like, F you, I've done this. Like that's that's what I wanted. But the more it goes on, the more you, you do it for you, if that mm. makes sense. So I think that people, sometimes they start things for the wrong reasons and they go you know you shouldn't be doing it just to say that to people and prove people wrong but also it does give you that fire to do it if that makes sense the chip on the shoulder gave got me in the plane yeah but i think i learned how to fly for me well, like that. that like the i i didn't start my business because i was like oh my god i'm gonna be i'm yeah. i got this i started it because i was like a, well, if I'm perfectly honest, A, I was bored as fuck with my job. <laughs> yeah. B, I'm unemployable. Yeah. Like, and I've always been unemployable. I'm just very lucky that I've always worked for very entrepreneurial managers who mm. are just like, we'll pay you a salary to do what the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, as long as you produce that. results, we don't care what you do. Yeah. I'm like, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. I've been very lucky. Yeah. And I know I've been very lucky. Um, but yeah, I think there is, I, I have never met a successful entrepreneur that hasn't in some degree had a large amount of insecurity, whether that be through bullying, through you know, wanting to get out of a certain situation or mm. whatever it might be. Everyone has an insecurity, an, an inferiority complex. Mm. It's like that imposter syndrome thing. I hate the concept of imposter syndrome because yeah. it implies that you have a medical condition. Yeah. Self-doubt makes you human yeah. and self-doubt keeps you competitive because then you know what you're not good at mm. and you can use that as fuel to get better at that thing so that yeah. you don't continually feel shit about that particular thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of successful people that I've met, whether they're athletes or... Like my ex-husband was a professional athlete, right? Really? And he was very successful but like when he was younger. Yeah. He had a huge chip on his shoulder, mm. massive. Mm. And that's what got him out of bed of every single morning. Yeah. I don't know anyone that hasn't achieved great things that hasn't gone, yeah, actually, fuck you. Yeah. Like, it's almost like, Djokovic, I think Djokovic said this mm. actually. So I've quoted so many people today. <laughs> I've got my memories like a bank of like cool shit people have said. Oh, I live in the world of like, that's a post. Um, <laughs> I've seen disease. that it's like, I read on the news the other day and it's like, I just seen it on TikTok. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so glad that you said that. So, so we funny. did a meme, right? And I said to the team, I was like, does this make sense? And they were like, yeah. We did a meme and it was like, um, you know the Victoria Beckham, David Beckham thing when he, she was like, oh yeah, we were working class family. He's like, be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, no. We did that meme and it was like, um, I read this in a book and he's like, be honest. Mm -hmm. And we're like, I am being honest. Be honest. She's like, okay, I saw it on TikTok. On TikTok. <laughs> That's TikTok like everyone. I read this really interesting thing. Where did you see it? TikTok. Um, but TikTok is great for information. It is. Um, but yeah, I've never met anyone that didn't have, and as I said, you know, Djokovic, I think he said something like the, the, the pain of winning Sorry, the pain of losing to him is greater than the um, joy that he gets from winning. Mm. And so he wants to not lose more than he wants to win, which is yeah. why he always wins. That's so true. Because to me, yeah. 
the the fear I had installed in my body to go back to a job, like a nine to five job, I was like, it's just not an option at yeah. all. And that's what keeps me the fear of losing going all the time. Yeah. And even just like, even though it sounds bad because you shouldn't you shouldn't want to feel embarrassed, but even if you like have to say, Oh, my business has failed, like the thought of that is like, oh, I can't have that happen. Like it has to keep going. But then But by the way, I've had a fail. My first business failed spectacularly. Wow. Spectacularly. Like I had literally about 25p in my well, bank you'll account. you'll learn from it, I suppose. The reason you? why we're doing well now is because that business failed. Mm -hmm. And like I said, do it for the plot. Everything works yeah. out. Yeah. And also just even didn't things die. now, it, it doesn't scare me as much because when bad things happen, like they're bad and obviously I don't want my business to fail, but like better things come from it. Yeah. So like even like ages ago, my thing was that I wanted to work in the creative team at Pretty Little Thing. Like that was my dream job. And that was all I had my heart set on. And I didn't get it. And I went into this rut and was like, there's nothing else I can do. I don't want to do anything. And then I found doing this. So even and if- And you've worked with Pretty Little Thing. Yeah. <laughs> which is even better than working in their creative yeah, team. Yeah, which is even better. Um, so yeah, even now it's like, I like to say things on social media like, if we've lost clients or like if we turn down clients like why because it's like it's okay to like things to go wrong it doesn't have to be like perfect all the time it's like it's very scary being it's like a, an adrenaline rush I feel like you're running on adrenaline when you're in a business because you're like this thing's happening and then your heart's going and then this other exciting thing happens and you're constantly just like on the edge of your seat but it's like an addiction isn't it you mm -hmm. can't stop it <laughs> I, I think it's like being waterboarded at Disney World it's terrifying but it's fun <laughs> it is you're like let's do it again even though I'm let's like, do it again I'm yeah. like wow have you, have you had any like real experience with like failure um I think there's, there's been like little things where I'm like I'll like launch a service or something where I'm like oh my god everyone will snatch this up and then it's like crickets and you're like embarrassing like no one's bought it but like I'll just like learn from it and be like okay why is no one bought it is it too expensive I'll like ask people and then it'll be you know it's too expensive or it's not this and then I'll just learn from it so I'll try now not to be like that's so embarrassing and, and leave it. I just learn from it rather mm. than just be like oh my god that's so embarrassing and like because I used to let that stop me from launching things so I'm like oh what if no one buys it mm. but now I'm like well what if they do buy it and then mm. you no know, if they don't there's there's reasons why and you have to sort of think about well why is it not working and learn from it instead of like stopping you from doing it mm. it's better to fail than to not do it at all I think yeah I I mean I said that I, again I had this pep talk with my dad the other day I was like you need to make a decision I was like you go that way you fail cool you come back you go that way you fail cool you come back yeah. you go fail. like you know you my going. life is just been a series of failures but I've just gone from each one without a lack of enthusiasm it's, it's quite like, fun though smash our head into that wall yeah <laughs> it's quite fun wall. to go through it like even when we have to deal with things at work or if we have like a trouble troublesome client or something it's like problem solving I love problem solving so like okay why do they feel like that and then mm. why does this happen then we'll like construct emails have conversations like it's problem solving stuff mm. I love so even though it is stressful and I'm like god I'm like, my head hits the pillow every night and I'm like have I done that and like it's fun it's like a roller coaster you'd rather be busy than bored yeah yeah definitely. I love that so you bring it just back to personal branding as we like kind of we've Oh, so I could talk to you all day, honestly. We're, get, <laughs> we're gonna be friends. Yay. Um the personal brand has obviously had a huge impact on your business. Like mm. you kind of launched yourself at like talking about your bu the bullying um experience that you had and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Talk us through like the evolution of Vicky's personal brand, how you got started, like and any tips that you would give to anyone. Because obviously this mm. didn't come naturally to you, right? Yeah, no, because I think because of all the stuff I had ingrained in my brain, I was like I, I went through a time where I was like, I am an insufferable person. Like, mm. I must be an awful human being if no one wants to be around me. I was like, I must just be really annoying. And I used to, like, have this joke that I'd have with friends where I'd go, give it a few months and you probably won't like me. Aww, like, I'd just be Vicky. like, I just feel like I'd, I, I just feel like I'm annoying to people. So I had to get through all these blocks and be like, I, had to, I went on, like, loads of retreats and cried and journaled and everything. And I was just like, I'm, I know I'm a good person. I know I'm a good friend. Like, I'm all these things. It's, it's their problem that they've dumped their shit on me um i also think people pick out the vulnerable yeah definitely like, like you when you're a really kind nice empathetic person mm. vultures come and pick at you yeah like please don't pick at me please i'm not but you're not now right you're super no, confident yeah and now it's like you it's like you have a, a suit on now like it's mm. just like bullets come at me and it's like bing like they don't affect me as much anymore you smile and they're like ding. yeah it's like ding, <laughs> just bouncing off with your butt 
<laughs> um, so I think I had to get over that first. I've tried to grow on TikTok a few times, but this time felt right. And then I thought about like, what's my story? How am I going to sell myself almost? What's my narrative? How mm-hmm. am I going to story tell? Um, and then once I had that and I was like, to me, I was like, okay, what's the best case scenario I'm going to get from this? My business is going to probably do well from this. I'm going to get inquiries. I'm going to get opportunities. I'm going to stand out in my industry because it is saturated and it's becoming more and more saturated. People are wanting to be social media managers and get into it. And I was like, I need something that's going to set me apart. And there's not many people that have done this in my Mm. industry. So to me, that's, that created my end goal and my why and my purpose. So I was like, this is going to happen. There's no way it won't. And I just kept posting and posting every day and it was really hard and it is really hard, but you've got to have that solid rock end goal for the end of it. And I think I naturally fell into like the motivational side of TikTok where people were like, I'd love for you to come and speak at my event about what you've been through and how you can inspire people your age or young business owners. And then I was, I gave it a go. I was obviously nervous, took advantage of two for one cocktails when we were doing it had some drinks and I went and did a speech on stage and I was like, that was really fun. And it was probably one of the best nights of my whole life. Like people came up to me afterwards and were like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I feel so inspired. And I was like, I'd love to do this. So I've done more speaking since then. Um, But I think that like, if you're in a position where you're like, I want to do that, you've got to have the the why Mm because if you just like I want to do it because Vicky's done it or I want to do it because it will get me followers or money, it's not a strong enough narrative to make you keep going with it it's got to be consistency and then for me as well because I'm so busy and I assume people listening to this are busy you've got to find the time to do it so rather than just being like I'm going to post three times a day what's the content we need to film voiceovers we need to put it in your diary when works best for you get it booked in um even things like booking a content studio so it's in the diary and you'll do it um because otherwise it just doesn't get done but there's only so much advice that like I can give you or like you can give people they have to have the want to do it themselves or Mm. they won't do it and that's where I think it's ingrained in you or it's not there's some people that are always going to play small because that's where they feel comfortable and some people are like I need to kick up the bum sometimes to go and do the big thing it's just Mm -hmm. like you need to have the the vision of what the end goal is to make you want to do I think Mm. I think to your point as well like playing small like I, I always say to the team I'm like we need to play big yeah. Like when you when you play big, the worst case is you get a great story. Yeah. Or a great outcome. Yeah. Like well, both of those are a win for me. Yeah. But, oh, we tried this thing and it fucking flopped. Yeah. Here's why it flopped. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then it's great content. Learn. Yeah. I always feel like the 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 biggest flops of my life, including content decisions, careers, yeah. relationships, <laughs> um, make the best person writing content. Do it for the content. Yeah, do it for the content. Yeah, do it for the content. I always think that. I think it's to your point about the motivational stuff, it's because it relates to people. Mm. Mm -hmm. How did you how do you then convert that attention into cash, into P into ROI? Mm. So I think when you're on TikTok, I think once you've got over ten thousand followers, you're in the creator scheme or whatever it's called. So you'll get paid for every thousand views. So then I started to think about that strategically because obviously, you know, I got bills to pay. I need to make some money on TikTok. So I was like, um, how can I turn my videos into less about like me and more about how I can help you? Um, And then start sort of getting more into storytelling, learning what format works best. And then obviously, I would track it sort of every week and go, okay, that one did well, that one didn't do well and learning about how I can do that. And then naturally things come from that like podcasts and events um, and things like that. And also like not being afraid to outreach to people. Like last week I was like, I found loads of podcasts I wanted to be on. I just sent them an email and was like, hey, this my name's Vicky. This is what I do. I'd love to be a guest. And I got some people that were like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, great. Because I think people think when you outreach, you're like desperate for mm. work. And it's just like, no, it's just, I want to, I'm not going to sit and wait for people to come to me. I'm going to ask them if I can do it. Stop waiting to be invited and invite your damn yeah, self. Yeah, invite yourself. That's Steph Sward Williams. I love Fuck that. being humble. That's her. her I love it. Like, yeah. 
I'm obsessed with Steph. Even, she says that all the time. Stop waiting to be invited. Yeah, invite down yourself. Because people are like, oh, that's, it's really like, you know, it's, it just feels like you're desperate being like, can I come and do this? But like, you can ask people. And even now, if there's like um, clients I want to work with, I'll just shoot them an email and say, look, like, I don't think you're reaching your full potential. I'd love to do this. Um, let's jump on a call and discuss it without being too like cold calling to them. Mm. So I think people want real human interactions don't they and rather just being like sell 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 to them yeah. just being like look like you're just not tapping into it enough i'd love to help you and and um you know create good good connections with people and it's just being a fucking human being like yeah. shoot your shot i i messaged someone recently who so i do this thing where i'll go through my first degree connections on sales navigator on linkedin mm. and i identify people who are my first degree connections who i would love to work with mm. and i'll just shoot them a message and be like hey i can see a posting but like i really hope you don't mind like i think you can be doing more would you mind if i sent you some tips yeah some people get really fucking pissed off yeah. when you send them advice <laughs> yeah They're like you're like i'm just trying to help oh God, you, just to help you. <laughs> um and it's like good advice like obviously it's mine so I think that but yeah and uh he came back and was like yeah great send me some advice so I sent him this advice and he was like this is actually really good like can we have a conversation and that happens a lot mm. happens a lot so I think don't be afraid to ask people to buy shit from you yeah like I think particularly in the UK we're very like oh no we can't do that yeah why not yeah like shout about your results yeah shout about yourself like yeah. even talk stuff. about the fact you bought your new car and like yeah. you're proud of this and you hired this new person it's fucking cool like yeah don't I think we are all so scared to like talk about what we've achieved because yeah. we're worried about people being like oh look at yeah. her them showing particularly women yeah but look at them showing off oh so up they don't do that in America no in America I they're like it. yeah yeah, they, they, just lo cheer they love to cheer around. for you in America. I think it's brilliant though, because I think everything sticks in people's heads. So if, say, if you're, if you've like been in Forbes or on the news or whatever, and if you share that all the time, it's going to feel like you're like, God, I'm really milking this. But people remember it. Mm. And sometimes you might be a stories user or a scroller on the feed, but eventually they're going to see it. And then that sticks in people's minds. So, like, even now, if I'm like, I've got nothing to post, but I'm just going to post again that I work with Netflix. And like, it was just like getting people's head. So you've just got to, you've got to be your biggest cheerleader and your biggest fan and just keep having yourself up. And that is going to be people that are very triggered by it and that think that you're really up yourself. But I am up myself. I'm a biggest fan and that's why we as do you well. That's why I'm up yourself. Like you loving no. yourself is not an arrogant thing. No, it's not. And it's just like, yeah, I'm really good at what I do. I'm a really, I'm a nice person. And that goes a long way, especially in business. Like, you know, when you meet people in business and they're assholes, you've just got to be like, I just hope karma comes yeah. your way. And that's all. I, I think <laughs> being a nice person, like nice guys always win. Yeah. I hate that concept of like nice guys comes out. It's bullshit. Like yeah. I've had so many interactions with people, even very recently where I, you know, thought they were a nice person. It actually turns mm. out they weren't. Mm. And I'm just like, cool, I just don't ever work with you again. Yeah. Like, that's fine. I don't need to do business. That like, is a it's big... my business. I don't need to do business yeah. with you. Yeah. And that's a big narrative as well with business is um, you can't be nice and successful, which I've struggled with because I am nice, like nicey, nicey, very like nice to everyone. Um, but I think you have to be you can be assertive, but you can mm. be nice, which I think I'm doing a good job at balancing, especially like running a team. Yeah. I'm nice to them. I'm respectful, but I can also be assertive when I need to be, which I've struggled with that in the past. It's very difficult. I've been too nice and yeah. too friendly. Gets which taken advantage kind of, of, doesn't it? It does. It does. But also it kind of blurs boundaries. Yeah. So when you then come to do performance reviews and people aren't doing so well, they then take it really personally yeah. that you're telling them things that they need to hear in order to improve yeah. but because it feels like it's their friend telling them that yeah it then becomes really like crit like personal yeah and that's my fault like mm. i should never have blurred those boundaries yeah, but when yeah. you're a small team i think and you just want everyone to be happy yeah. and you like live and breathe with each other like you're in yeah. each other's pocket all day it's hard not to be friends with your team yeah so i've drawn a massive line now like yeah. i used to go out for drinks with my team like yeah. as friends yeah like I'd, i've stayed at one of my ex-employees houses like yeah. now i'm just like nope we yeah. do this we do this we do this i love you all very much I yeah always, well i come in the, i leave the office and i'm like love you lots of jelly tarts yeah. like every time because that's what my kids say mm -hmm. they go I love you lots like jelly tots. I love you lots like lollipops. Oh. That's like their favorite things to say. So I say it to everyone. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're a team. We're not yeah. like, I'm not friends with you. Yeah. I can be friendly. Yeah. I will love you. I will support you. I will show up and support you outside of work for that thing that you're doing yeah. as a side hustle. Like I've done that for a couple of people. Like they've gone and done yeah. speaking gigs and stuff. And I'm like, I'm there. I'm yeah. The champion, I love you. Yeah. We're not hanging out on yeah. a Saturday night. Like Keep the boozing. line. Keep yeah, the line You there. have to be. You have to be clear. Yeah. You're the leader. You're the business owner. You need to give me some tips on that because I'm a new manager and I need all the help. I mean, babe, I'm not the person to give you that information. I can tell you that for fun. 
I'll leave you with my boyfriend. He's amazing at this stuff. He's, <laughs> he's my coach for how to handle these situations. Oh, I love it. Because he's run so many businesses and so many teams. Like wow. he, he is the best at this stuff. Like even, even, like, even articulating emails that are really spicy. Mm. Like my reaction is just like, <laughs> and he's like, no, no, <laughs> you can't say that. I'm like that. I'm very like, I always think later with everything in life yeah. I do now and then think later. Yeah, everything's urgent. Yeah. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> even, even like in my life, like even this weekend, I was like, I want to paint the whole house. And I just went out to Binky that day and just bought I it. I do that all the time. It. I'm like, I'm rearranging the furniture. Yeah. And then my mum's like, no, you've got to sand the walls and like pre like gloss them oh, and all that boring. stuff. I'm like, just paint it. It'll be fine. And it's just so bad because then I'm like, you know, with later, you're like, I've made a mistake. And then you have to go back and but I'm like, whatever, I'll just fix it. Yeah, I do that too. Very, very reactive. Yeah. Like, after Sarah Ashcroft said that on the podcast, mm. actually, she was like, her team hates her because she changes their mind all the time. And I'm like, mine too. <laughs> We're just very, like, delusional people. But that's why, yeah. I think that's why people are successful when you're like that. May your delulu come to Lulu. Oh, I love that. Um, looking back, is there any advice that you would give your younger self about, like, going through everything that you went through? Um, I wish I would have just done stuff sooner. Like, it sounds really boring, to, as in just do it. But I wish I would have just been like, oh, Vic, life's just too short. Just do the thing. Like, who mm. cares? Those girls are going to be applying to work for you in a couple of years. But obviously, I wouldn't be have this mindset now if I hadn't have been through all that. So I think I would just yeah. be like, just kick up the bum. Yeah, I said that to my, um, again, my dad. I was at my parents' <laughs> house last night. And he's going, I'd love to sail around the Atlantic. You know, like all it, all it costs is this. And I was like, why don't you? And he was like, oh, I can't. I was like, why not? Why? Why not? I wanted to go do a skydive this year. So I just went and did one. <gasps> oh, I'd love to do that. It's amazing. Is it? I turned up and the guy who was my instructor, who was amazing. I'm so lucky. He was really, really good. He was like, so you have charity? I was like, no. no. He's like, uh, uh, a friends and family? I was like, no. no. And he's like, so you're here by yourself to jump out of a, fa a plane at 13,000 feet. I was like, yep. Yes. And he's like, cool. <laughs> oh, I'd love to do that. The adrenaline. Just fuck it. Like, the adrenaline. I love the adrenaline. Yeah, adrenaline. honestly, it is, it is one of the best days of my life. I can't, I cannot recommend it enough. But my point being is everyone waits for something to happen in order to do something else. Yeah. Like, we just want to make that much money before we do this. We just yeah. want to find the love of our life before we go to that place. Like, yeah. we just want to have that thing before we go to on holiday to that place that we've always yeah. wanted to go to like i just need that thing before i can get like just fucking do it yeah do now think later yeah fuck it life is very short it's too short just do the thing I've got a big neon sign on my office that says just fucking post it oh I and love i it. Like, live in that world that's like my mindset now and it's sad that you have to go through things that make you think god life is short but it is and you just have to do yeah things. but i'm very grateful for those things because i think my, I'm glad I have this mindset now and not when I'm like 70. Yeah. And been like, shit. Yeah, because people play it so safe and so small. They need it. They have an experience then they think about that. But when you have it early on, it's like ingrained in and you're like, just do the thing. My goal in life is to get to 92 years old and have a huge dinner table full of my family members my great grandchildren and I'm really rich and successful <laughs> and I'm just covered in diamonds and I'm like that grandma that's like really wrinkly and old but like the glam just grandma. fabulous yeah, yeah. like feathered pajamas or whatever <laughs> and like some man in speedos feeding me grapes <laughs> and they're going grandma like tell us about that thing and like, my whole life is just a dinner party anecdote oh that's what I that's want. the goal you've got to have it like fun stories to tell people memories that your life is should just be a collection of great memories that's what my I goal think. is yeah i love Amazing. it vicky thank you so so much for being on the podcast i honestly I could you. talk to you for fucking hours i know this has been 10 out of 10 <laughs> combo before i, I let it. you go what are the three things practically that people should do in order to build their brand on tiktok because i feel like that's your thing that is my thing um i would say to think about yourself as it sounds really weird, but like as a product you want to sell, like how can you sell yourself? So it's like, what's your story? What are your values? How do you want to show up online and create a really strong narrative? And even if it feels like you're like, my life's really boring, I've not done anything, like ask your friends and family because they'll have, they won't just say you're really boring. Um, once you have that, I would say, think about a realistic schedule that you can stick to um you know whether that is three times a day or whether it's once a day or monday to friday um and the format of content that that is whether that's speaking to camera or whether it's like using stuff you've got in your camera roll and telling stories but 
like third thing that I've spoken about loads on this podcast is like the why. So like if this all goes well, which it will, um, what is the the end goal that you want? And that's what's going to be the driving force and pic- picturing that every day, having it as your lock screen um, and thinking like there's no way that that's not going to work and that's what's going to get you through it. But it's all selling and storytelling. But I think if you've got a good story to tell, people will listen to it and it'll in time help you get to the end goal. Even if it takes forever like it eventually happens like i can't remember who it was someone said something about that it's success is guaranteed you just have to keep doing it like if you say oh i want to be like a singer one day if you keep doing it every day even if it takes 15 years eventually you'll you'll be that thing I mean, great examples that Colonel Sanders found in KFC at yeah. 64. Vera Wang designing her first dress at 40. Brilliant. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. She didn't get put, put, was a published author until she was like in her 40s. Exactly. Jeff Bezos was turned down by like 14 different venture capitalists before he finally got funding for Amazon. It's mad. But everyone knows, everyone has something in them, don't they? Where they're like, oh, I just, that I'm being called to do that thing. You'll get to that point. You just have to take the action to do it and keep doing it and you'll get it. I think the difference between a successful person and a not successful person mm. from a career monetary sense is the successful ones just keep going yeah even like when they, you they, get they just go go longer yeah basically because like eventually something's not everything works out in the end everything everything you've got to be very resilient and very strong yeah thank you so much Vicky. this has been amazing thank you for having me you're so welcome <laughs> love you lots of jelly dots love you more like s'mores I love you that. Love you more. I just made that up. (laughs) I'm here for it. Love you more like s'mores. See you next week. Thank you for listening to this episode. I absolutely love doing these podcasts, and I would be able to reach a hell of a lot more people if you like and subscribe. So thank you to all of you who have already liked and subscribed. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave us a five star review so we can reach more people.